Recombinant DNA technology is an important tool in understanding the structure, function and regulation of genes and their products. It is a complex step-by-step -step process. The first few steps in DNA recombinant technology involve the isolation of the genetic material, fragmentation of DNA by restriction endonucleases, and amplification of a gene of interest. Once the foreign DNA has been extracted, the next steps are insertion of recombinant DNA into the host cell or organism, obtaining the foreign G product, and downstream processing. Let's understand the techniques used to carry out the last three steps. Insertion of recombinant DNA into the host cell is one of the most challenging steps as first the bacterial cell has to be made competent to receive the DNA. If we consider the insertion of a recombinant DNA bearing gene for ampicillin into the host cell E. coli, the host cells will become ampicillin resistant. Thereafter, when the host cells are spread on agar plates containing ampicillin, only the transformants will grow. On the other hand, non-transformant recipient cells will die. In this case, the ampicillin resistant gene acts as a selectable marker since it identifies and eliminates non-transformants and permits the growth of transformants. Let us now understand how to obtain a target protein from a foreign gene of recombinant DNA. If any protein encoding gene is expressed in many hosts such as plant cells, bacterial cells and fungal cells, it is called a recombinant protein. Cultures such as an ampicillin medium may be used to extract the desired protein. Then this protein can be purified by using different separation techniques such as nitrocellulose filter and autoradiography. After the purification process, the cells storing cloned genes of interest may be grown on a small scale in the laboratory. These cells can also be multiplied in a continuous culture system in which the used medium such as ampicillin is drained from one side, while a fresh medium is added from the other, so that the cells can be allowed to remain in their most exponential phase. Therefore, a continuous culturing system produces a large number of cells with recombinant DNA or biomass, which results in higher yields of the desired protein. To produce biomass in even larger quantities, a bioreactor is used. It is a vessel used to carry out a chemical process. A bioreactor uses raw material such as microbial plant, animal or human cells and converts it into products such as enzymes. About a hundred to a thousand liters of culture can be processed in such units. It facilitates the growth of a large volume of biomass by providing optimum growth conditions in terms of temperature, pH level, substrate, salts, vitamins and oxygen. The most commonly used bioreactor is the stirred tank type, which consists of a large stainless steel vessel with a capacity of up to 500,000 decimeter cube. Around the steel vessel is a jacket of circulatory water used to control the temperature inside the bioreactor. There is also an agitator inside the bioreactor comprising a series of flat blades which can be rotated with the help of a motor. This ensures thorough mixing of the contents so that nutrients come in close contact with the microorganisms. The agitator also prevents settling of the cells at the bottom. The bioreactor also makes adequate provision for aeration, temperature and pH control. For proper aeration, air can be forced in at the bottom of the tank through a porous ring called 
the sparging ring by a process called sparging. Moreover, there is an outlet to remove air and waste gases at the top of the tank. The top of the tank also has a number of inlet tubes called ports through which materials can be introduced or withdrawn. For example, the inoculation port is used to introduce initial inoculums and the nutrient port to introduce more nutrients. Similarly, the antiform port is used to introduce antiforming agents, while the pH port to introduce acids or alkalis to maintain optimal pH. At the base of the tank, there is a harvest line to extract the culture medium and microbial products. Another type of bioreactor is the one with a sparged stirred tank. Sterile air bubbles are sparged through this reactor which increases the surface area for oxygen transfer. Once the biomass has been obtained from the bioreactor, the final step in the recombinant DNA technology is downstream processing. It refers to the recovery and purification of biosynthetic products such as pharmaceuticals before they are brought to the market as finished products. In downstream processing, pharmaceutical products such as antibiotics and hormones are formulated with suitable preservatives. Thereafter, these products are also subjected to clinical trials and quality testing. By aiding in the development of these new medicines and vaccines, recombinant DNA technology has revolutionized medical science and opened new vistas of research.